Hey everybody, welcome back. There's a release of Lossa Scaling Frame Generation 3.0 today, which promises more options for frame generation and less artifacting. This is a really great program if you're not using it already. If you are, you definitely wanna update. It is available here in Steam. It costs $7. It's probably the best $7 you're gonna spend in flight simulation. And one of the great things about it is that they are constantly updating this program. The frame generation portion of this program was released a year ago, and this is now version 3.0. They've gone from doubling the frame rate to tripling the frame rate to quadrupling the frame rate. And now in this version 3.0, you can get up to 20 times frame generation. The artifacting improvements are excellent. So that's what we're really focused on today. Now, what is loss of scaling frame generation and how does it work? Loss of scaling is originally designed to upscale windowed games to full screen. That's not the portion of this program that we're interested in. We're interested in the frame gen version. What the frame gen portion of this program does is it takes whatever is being rendered on your screen, predicts what the next one, two, three, etc., frames are going to look like, and then it interpolates that and creates extra frames, giving you a frame rate boost, more smoothness, better performance. I'll put a link in the description to previous videos I've done on loss of scaling so you can catch up if you're, if you're new to the program. If you're not new to the program, there was an update in, September, in November, November 16th, that introduced something called resolution scale, which is really important for us. Resolution scale allows input frames to be processed at a reduced resolution while generating output at the original resolution. So for example, if you're playing in 1440p, setting the scale to 50% enables loss of scaling frame generation to generate 1440 output from a 720 input. Gives us a performance boost with a minor quality and trade-off, but what's important to understand is it's not image scaling. It doesn't downscale or upscale the images. What it does is uses less information to estimate what the next frames are gonna look like in order to generate them. So using less information allows it to do it faster, so you're gonna get better performance. But the headline grabber today is loss of scaling frame generation three. The big thing for me is the reduced artifacting. Artifacting is kind of the flickering and extra artifacts and weird stuff around, particularly around the, the outsides of windows, along the edges of windows in your airplane. Now the headline for this improvement, this release today, is the unlocked multiplier. Now, previous versions of frame gen loss of scaling frame generation have allowed two times, three times, and four times frame generation. This new version three allows up to 20 times frame generation. So for every frame your sim generates, you could generate theoretically 20 additional frames. Are you going to realistically be able to do that? No, but that to me isn't even the headline of this release. The headline of this release to me is the better quality. When you use frame generation, the frame gen mod, you notice around the edges of windows and things like that, you see artifacting. It happens in loss of scaling frame generation as well, if you're trying to get more out of the program than you can realistically expect. But this version three improves that flickering and artifacting a lot, and we'll see that once we get into the sim. The next important thing is the lower GPU load. Times two mode is 40% more efficient then loss of scaling frame generation version two, four times three times four and above, it's a 45% reduction in GPU load compared to version two. Now down here is the big thing that, that a lot of people are gonna talk about, the unlocked multiplier now capped at times 20. All well and good, you're, you'll see when we get into the same, you're not gonna get up to times 20. And one of the important things to bear in mind is your base frame rate. You need a minimum of 30 frames per second in order to be able to use this consistently. I have actually found, they say 40, 40 FPS is preferred, 60 is ideal. I have found that 60 FPS, if you can get 60 FPS in your sim, that's gonna give you the best experience with loss of scaling frame generation. So what you have to do is turn your settings down to get to a point where you can consistently get at least 30, preferably 40, but ideally 60 frames per second and then turn on loss of scaling and you're gonna see 
the best results. So here's the program. One thing that might be a little confusing when you open it, you'll see version 2.13. There is a new version three user interface, but that is in beta. But what we're looking for is over here under frame generation, loss of scaling frame generation 3.0. That's what we're looking for. For Microsoft Flight Simulator, scaling type you want LS1, loss of scaling frame generation 3.0, and then here you have times three, times four, or you can set a custom number. I'm not gonna go into the custom numbers because really what you're gonna use is two, three, or possibly four. One thing to keep in mind about which mode to use, using a divisor of your monitor refresh rate is a good idea. For example, my monitor refresh rate is 60 Hertz. So for me, it makes the most sense to use times two and possibly even set my frame limiter at 30 frames per second and then 30 times 2 is 60. If you have a let's say a 120 hertz monitor you could use times 3 and try limiting your frame rates at 40 but really what you want to try to do is get your frame rates to divide evenly by the mode number into your monitor refresh rate. If you have something like a 145 hertz monitor 124 hertz monitor, something like that with an odd number, a good tip is to try to limit that refresh rate to an even divisor, 120, 90, whatever it might be. That's gonna help this program run more smoothly. You can add profiles, as you can see over here, I have a profile for Microsoft Flight Simulator and for my Formula One game. So if you wanna add profiles, you can do that to switch settings between different games or different programs that you use this with. The other thing you can do, come here to settings, you can set a scale hotkey. The default is control S. So control S is how you enable and disable the program. Now they call it a scale hotkey because as I said earlier, originally this program was to upscale windowed games to full screen. So they still call it scale, but actually what you're doing is turning the frame gen on and off. Now here we are in the sim, I'll show you how to start the program. So what you wanna do, you have the window open over top of your sim, click the scale button and you're gonna see the five second countdown start. Once that countdown starts, switch over into your sim window and you saw that little brief flash and that little flash is the indication that loss of scaling is now running. To turn it off, just click here on unscale. So we'll do that one more time. Have all your settings, click on scale. You see the countdown from over here. And you saw that little brief flash and that tells you that it is running. If you leave this window open while you scale, it's gonna give you a warning that you don't have a game window as your main window because all loss of scaling does is works on whatever your screen is displaying, whatever is the focus of your screen. So right now the focus of my screen is the loss of scaling user interface, so that's what it's gonna scale. That's what it's gonna have its effect on. So here we are now in the sim. We're gonna take a look at a takeoff with the frame gen mod on, but not loss of scaling. Look over here in the lower left-hand corner and along the edge of this window to see what kind of ghosting, that artifacting that we see with the frame gen mod. Here we go with the takeoff. And as you can see, when we get rolling, you get those little artifacts there in the lower left-hand corner of the window and along the leading edge of that window on the left-hand side. A Little bit of a squirrely takeoff here, but you can see the artifacting. And that's what we're looking to improve upon with loss of scaling. Now we'll do the same thing with loss of scaling running. The frame gen mod is off, so all that we're gonna see now is what we get with loss of scaling. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner there where we saw the artifacting with the frame gen mod, right here with loss of scaling, there is literally nothing. There's no artifacting at all, it looks tremendous. Huge, huge improvement, huge difference with loss of scaling versus the frame gen mod. 
So it seems I have found another way to freeze Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Don't go into the free camera when you hit the escape button. However, uh, I think our look at loss of scaling is pretty great. It's a, it's a phenomenal program. Read nothing but really, really good reviews about it. The key is to get a good solid minimum frame rate. If you're getting you know 25 to 30, kind of fluctuating in that range, and trying to use this program to get you know 120 frames per second or 90 or whatever, it's not going to work. You need to get a minimum base frame rate of at least 30 consistently, and then try using, like I said earlier, an even divisor of your monitor refresh rate. If you do that, you're going to have some success. This might require turning down some of your settings. However, fantastic program, really, really good update. If you guys have any experience with this, any feedback, any questions, I'd appreciate it if you put them in the comments section below. Hope everybody's having a great day and take care.